Over the past month or so, a few of you have pointed out my old Fermi flagship GTX 480 sitting on the shelves behind me. Despite being what's probably the least impressive flagship product to come from the green team in recent memory, many of us still seem to have fond memories of the only graphics card to double as a George Foreman grill. Anyway, having spotted the old fellow, many of you requested I benchmark it in the latest games, just for fun. As hilarious as it would be, throwing 1.3 teraflops of processing power at the latest and greatest titles, I've come up with a slightly different idea that takes that idea and turns it into a much more interesting test. Since I have a reference GTX 480, 580, 680, 780, 980, and now a 1080, why not do a comparison between the various x80 series GPUs released over the past 6 years? Well, that's exactly what I've done. Before we jump to the benchmarks, let's see how these various GPUs compare on paper. Here we can see clearly just how complex the GeForce architecture has become over the past 6 years. The x80 series now features a little over 5 times more CUDA cores when compared to 2010's GTX 480. Yet despite that, the die size is now 40% smaller and includes more than twice as many transistors. Many of you will no doubt be quick to point out the $500 MSRP of the early GTX 480, 580 and 680 graphics cards, all of which were the single GPU flagship models of the time. Then along came the GTX 780 and pricing got a bit out of control. Thankfully, AMD did eventually come to the party with their world-beating Radeon R9 290X and at $550, they forced Nvidia to re-evaluate pricing. The result was a new $500 MSRP for the GTX 780, the same asking price of the previous X80 models. A year after the GTX 780 price drop, the GTX 980 landed and at $550, the release day MSRP again crept up a little. Still, given the extra performance and improved efficiency, most took the $50 premium on the chin and got on with it. Now with this year's release of the Pascal-based GDX 1080, we face a similar situation. With no direct competition in sight, Nvidia bumped the MSRP by another $50, giving us what will eventually be a $600 1080. Again, performance and efficiency has been improved, in fact much more so than any time in the previous 6 years, so how easily can that extra $50 over the 980 or $100 over the older models be justified? Let's move on to find out. As usual, the results have been recorded using my GPU test system built inside the Corsair Carbide 600C. The processor of choice is the Intel Core i7-6700K, clocked and locked at 4.5GHz to try and avoid any CPU bottlenecks. Although I have tested at both 1080p and 1440p, in an effort to keep the video as short as possible, I'll be only discussing this 1440p results here. Those interested in the 1080p data can refer to the written review, the link for which will be provided in the video description. First up, we have Battlefield 4. Here we see a nice 71% performance gain from the 480 to the 680, skipping the 580 of course. Then from the 680 to the 980, we see a smaller 44% margin. However, from the 980 to the 1080, we'd see a huge 86% leap in performance for an average frame rate of 110 FPS. This time, we see a 68% performance jump from the 980 to the 1080 in Star Wars Battlefront at 1440p. That's an impressive result when you consider the fact that the 980 was 42% faster than the 780, which is 24% faster than the 680. The GTX 480 averaged just 20 FPS in Black Ops 3. Of course, this GPU was never designed with resolutions such as 1440p in mind, at least now when playing titles from 2015 onwards. The 580 was 30% faster, while the 680 was just 15% faster again. The 780 provided a 20% boost in performance, though it was the 980 that made a truly massive step here, offering an 83% performance increase. It's difficult to say if these gains are down to the refined GPU architecture or a lack of driver optimization for the 780, along with the GPUs that came before it. I suspect it's a bit of both really, though the driver is possibly playing a greater role in this title. Unlike Black Ops 3, we see a more even playing field in Tom Clancy's The Division. The GTX 1080 was 69% faster than the 980, while the 980 was 36% faster than the 780. The 780 led the 680 by a 32% margin, and the 680 was also 32% faster than the 580, which crushed the 480 by a 46% margin. We see some pretty huge gains from the one architecture to the next in Just Cause 3, and given the game's history with AMD and Nvidia drivers, we're going to put most of these performance differences down to driver optimization. The Fermi-based 480 and 580 were extremely slow, 
38% slower than the GTX 680 in fact. Although the 780 was 21% faster than the 680, it was still 39% slower than the GTX 980. Finally, the 1080 provided a nice 58% performance boost over the 980. The performance of the Fermi-based GPUs here looks very primal. They're just a few frames away from throwing rocks. The GDX 680 was 92% faster than the 580, while the 780 delivered a further 32% bump in performance. Going from the 780 to the 980 netted 39% more performance, and finally from the 980 to the 1080 saw a 70% increase in performance. From the GDX 580 on, we consistently saw large performance gains, 82% when going from the 580 to the 680, 48% from the 680 to the 780, and 43% from the 780 to the 980. Finally, the 1080 provided a 67% performance boost over the 980. When testing with The Witcher 3, we see very consistent gains from one GPU to the next. However, the largest gains can be seen when upgrading from the 480 to the 580. Here an 88% performance increase is seen. Then from the 780 to the 980 lands us 52% more performance. And finally, from the 980 to the 1080 sees a further 57% performance gain. Having now looked at 8 modern games, let's take a flashback to 2010's Metro 2033, a game released the same year as the GTX 480 and 580. Testing at 1440p sees the 580 averaged just 31 FPS, making it 19% faster than the 480. The 680 was 32% faster than the 580, while the 680 was another 29% faster. The 980 was 28% faster than the 780, while the 1080 provided a further 56% performance boost over the 980. The power figures on screen are based on entire system draw, which includes not just the graphics card, but also my 6700K test system. As you can see, the 480 was a bit of a power pig, causing the system to draw up to 291 watts under load. The 580 allowed for a 10 watt reduction, while the new 1080 consumed 25% less power while delivering worlds more performance. In fact, the 1080 consumed just 7 watts more than the 980, and we know it to be around 60% faster on average. Well, that was an interesting trip down memory lane. It's hard to believe that the once king of the Nvidia hill looks so pathetic today. I'm of course talking about the GTX 480, and yes, I get that it's 6 years old now, but I can recall some pretty impressive performance back in the day when playing games such as Battlefield Bad Company 2 for example. Taking a look at the performance across the 9 games tested, we find some interesting results. Looking back to 2010 when the GTX 580 was released, it was found to be 25-30% to faster than the 480 at the time. Those figures are in line with what we've found today using the latest drivers testing with modern games. The GTX 680 was also around 40% faster than the 580, so that's again in line with what we've found here. Meanwhile, the 780 was around 25-30% to faster than the 680, and we found here it was an average 29% faster. Now for the interesting stat. When the GTX 980 was first introduced, I believe it was around 25-30% to faster than the vanilla GTX 780. In today's games, we found that the margin has grown somewhat to a little over 40%. This comes down to the fact that in today's games, Nvidia has been heavily optimizing for Maxwell, while forgetting Kepler for the most part. This does, however, make the 67% performance gain for the Pascal-based 1080 over the 980 all the more impressive. As history has shown us, you can expect this margin to grow slightly as Nvidia shifts focus towards Pascal for upcoming titles. Just to be clear, I'm not trying to suggest that the new Pascal GDX 1080 is over 60% faster than the Maxwell-based GeForce 900 series. The Titan X, and in particular 980 Ti, bridged the gap between these two series, and with the 980 Ti costing just $50 more when comparing MSRPs, there isn't much in it. The 980 Ti overclocks much better too, so there's that to keep in mind as well. This was merely a comparison between GeForce X80 GPUs. For the Titan X 980 Ti and 1080 comparison, please check out my main 1080 and 1070 video where I compare all these graphics cards in over 20 games. Thanks for joining me again at Hardware Unboxed. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time.